So for this video, we're going to go ahead and find the regression equation and then use that regression equation to make a prediction. To find the regression equation, all you have to do is in your calculator, make sure like we did for the correlation, you need to make sure that your variables are entered in L1 and L2. So again, I'm going to go through this. I go to stat and edit, and I can see that I have in L1, I have my height values, and in L2, I have my pulse rates. So from here, I'm just going to go back like I was doing correlation again. Remember, we press stat, then we go to calc, and we go down to number four, lin reg ax plus b. So we're finding the equation of that line, y equals mx plus b. When we do that, we go ahead, x list, make sure that's your explanatory variable, y list, make sure it's a response variable, so you're x and your y's. And this time, we can actually uh, store the regression equation, and we can store that into y1. And now to get this into actually, to store it in a y1, uh, we go to the bars button right here, and we're going to use the y bars, or y variables, which we're actually doing. You want to look at the function. You want to insert in the function. I want to insert this into the y1 equation. So I'll store my regression equation into y1. I'll show you what that does. So we go to calculate. When we calculate, it gives you your regression values. And again, if we look at our regression values, your slope A is negative 0.397. Your B is 113.322. Um, and the other value you are interested in your R. And your R here is negative 0 0.146. We talked about that correlation already. So when we go to our next slide, our next slide tells us to Using your equation, predict the values of a person with the height of 70 inches. So our x, our height is the explanatory variable x. We're going to predict at 70 now. So your x is going to equal 70. So here's our actual regression equation. And from this, we're going to plug in 70 into the x. And when we plug in 70 into the x and we actually calculate this, we get here is the actual predicted value y hat. And it's 85.533. So this is the y hat, the actual predicted value. And anytime you see uh, hats or bars over something, that means they're estimated or predicted values. So our predicted value is 85.533. Now, if we want to find the residual for that value, the residual is just the actual value minus the, ver minus the predicted value. And we can see here that our actual value occurred for 70 was at 100. So when we look at our predicted then, Again, the residual is y minus y hat, or the actual minus the predicted. So we're going to take 100, which is the actual value for the post rate at 70 from the data that we have, and we're going to subtract out that predicted value that we just calculated at 70, which was 85.533. When we do that, we're going to get this equation right here. We're going to get this residual right here, which is 14.467. And because that residual is positive, that means that my predicted value, or my predicted line itself, underestimating what the actual values are. And that the only way for it to be positive is that means that the line is always below the actual values. So it's always underestimating because it's the prediction line. All right. And what else we can look at? Again, remember how I told you we stored that variable. We stored it in a y1. If you go to y equals, here's that actual regression equation. And so what you could do is make a table and go look at other values if you wanted to. We're not going to actually do that. We don't have to do that because we can just plug in one single value. But if we want to look at multiple values, you could actually just make a table and look at values from here. But here goes that regression equation that we looked at a second ago. 